Do you want to install vinyl plank flooring for the first time? I've been there, and to be honest, it was a little overwhelming. You'll need to figure out the layout, know how to cut obstructions, and forget about it if your walls or floor aren't level. There is a slew of difficulties that can set your vinyl plank flooring installation back. Today, I'll teach you 10 beginner mistakes and how to avoid them. Mistake number 1, not sinking fasteners. The first step in installing vinyl planks is to make sure you have a solid, flat surface to work with. Examine the surface of your floor after you've removed your old flooring, carpet, tile, etc. Make sure there aren't any fasteners protruding from the surface. If you don't drop your fasteners below the floor surface, they can transfer to the flooring itself. Mistake number 2. Leaving your baseboards installed. The next blunder is perhaps more of a personal preference. Leaving the baseboards in place makes the work much easier and is rather typical. When removing carpet though, you'll need a thick quarter round to disguise the expansion gap as well as the height difference between the lower and upper floors. Mistake number 3. Not leveling the subfloor. Making sure your subfloor is level is an important step before installing vinyl plank flooring. You may end up with flooring that has gaps between the boards or click when you walk on them if you neglect this step. Start by placing a long bubble level on the flooring to see if they're level. Span over several regions with your level, looking for any dips or humps. Mistake number 4. Not undercutting door jam and trim. Your transition strip should be able to fit under the door jam and may even be part of the trim. You'll have to scribe the flooring around the trim if you don't undercut the trim. This means you'll have to fill up the spaces with caulk. This does not appear to be a smart idea and will stand out like a sore thumb. Mistake number 5. Ending rows with small boards. What doesn't appear to be appealing? At the end of a row, seeing tiny small fragments of wood. However, with a little forethought, you may easily prevent this blunder. The directions for calculating this should come from your flooring manufacturer, but the concept is simple. You don't want to conclude a row with less than an 8 inches piece when using 4 feet planks. And simply modifying your starting plank, you can avoid this. Mistake number 6 Thinking you need a lot of fancy tools. All of the straight full width cuts can be made by you. But you don't have a fancy miter saw, you may be thinking, that brings us to mistake number 6. Vinyl flooring has the advantage of being cut using a number of low-cost instruments. Mistake number 7, not planning for corners. You can make a mistake without even recognizing it, you didn't plan for corners. You can use a gentle mallet and a tapping block to lay down a couple of rows of vinyl plank flooring. But then you came to a hump in the room that formed a corner, and your board was too short to comfortably traverse the gap. The good news is that vinyl plank flooring is quite adaptable. You just kept the rows apart until you reached the row with the far corner. Then, at the head of the row, you need to put a smaller plank. The rest of the row was pulled down, leaving us with a virtually full-length piece. Mistake number 8. Laying similar patterns next to each other. Preparation is the greatest approach to prevent making this error. We unpacked your vinyl plank flooring in an area near the bedroom instead of pulling it directly out of the boxes. We divided the boards into 8 heaps, one for each of the 8 patterns. Mistake number 9. Putting air vents across a seam. We ran into an air vent on the floor as we approached the far wall, which was error number 9. This vent was smack dab in the middle of our board's width. We couldn't really do much if it overlapped a lengthy edge. We may, however, change where it strikes along the length. So, before the vent, we cut and placed a plank that would give us about 8 inches before the cutout. Mistake number 10, not following manufacturer recommendations. When we placed vinyl plank flooring in the past, the most common question I received was, why didn't you put down the underlayment? That's mistake number 10. The underlayment is integrated into the back of the vinyl plank flooring you're installing, so there's no need for an additional barrier. If you use one, it truly voids the guarantee. So, listen to your manufacturer's advice and do what they advise. That concludes our list of the top 10 mistakes to avoid when installing vinyl plank flooring. Are you getting ready to put down vinyl plank flooring in your home? Hopefully, these pointers will make your job a little simpler. For further information, see how to install vinyl plank flooring before you begin your project.